Welcome back. We're about to do this amazing series called Girls with Crowns. I'm partnering with Black Girl Magic Museum and HBCU Fan Addict. So we just did a live on Instagram and I want you to watch it and be empowered. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited for this. Hello, hello, hello. Everyone, I'm waiting for Dr. Tuesday with HBCU Fanatic to join. I'm so glad to be here. I'm Dominique with Black Girl Magic Museum. Hey, Tara. Hey, Addison. Hey, Tashara. Hey, I Danceaholic. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're super excited. So, guys, I'm just so happy to be back, to be... Um, and then also, for everyone that's on... Happy Delta Day to everyone, for the, to the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta. Um, I got my red on for you guys today. Hello, everyone. And then we're going to get ready to interview Miss Morgan State. We're going to start at 6 o'clock. She's going to be on at 6 o'clock. So we're going to get to interview her. We're starting our Girls with Crowns. HBCU edition. We're super excited about that. Super excited. Let's see. Let me see if I can get Dr. Tuesday. Dr. Tuesday Mahoney. She is the assistant vice chancellor with Southern University. So she will be, we will be doing this series interviewing all the queens from different HBCUs and just learning more about why it was important for them to become a queen and be a part of um, this series and being a queen for their organizations and being an example. Please ask us any questions that you would love for Taylor to um, answer. I think Taylor's already on, so I'm gonna add her also. Taylor, let me know if you can join. Hi. Oh, you're gorgeous. How are you. you? I'm good. How are you? I am good. Are you excited? How are you feeling? I'm excited. Um, it's good to finally do something. I think I took a too long a break over winter break, so it's good to get back in the groove of things. So I'm excited. Yes. Did you enjoy your winter break? I definitely did. Yes. Yes. Taylor, why um, Dr. Tuesday is joining. Tell us a little bit about yourself, why you decided to choose Morgan State, and um, how you became Miss Morgan State. Okay. Okay. Thank you in the comments. Thank you. Um, so my name is Taylor Odoms. I'm now a senior in college, which is crazy to hear. It's crazy to say still. Um, I'm a biology major. Hi, Dr. Tuesday. Hi, Dr. Tuesday. Hello, <laughs> Queen Taylor. How are you? How are you? I'm great. And hello, Dominique. Hi. Will we have a chance to introduce this series before Queen Taylor gets started? Well, you know you're so much better than me, so I'm gonna let you go. I was I was buying time for you. 
<laughs> Thank you so much and sorry about the delay. Hello, everybody. Come on in. You're so welcome to this awesome series. I'm so excited to be partnering with Black Girl Magic Museum as along with my um, platform, HBCU Fan Attic, and we are showing homage today to our royalty, royalty. And so this amazing series is only going to empower Dominique black women and girls and just women in general and hopefully some men um our series is called girls with crowns and as you can see yes, we have a beautiful queen and her beautiful crown today that we will be meeting and of course finding more uh, out about her and her amazing historically black college, um, which is an HBCU. So before we get started, if you ladies would just allow me to talk a little bit about that crown. Okay. The crown is worn as a symbolism to absolute authority to whom wears it. And the crown's uh, symbolism represents seven key factors that I just want to share uh, with you all today. Uh, Queen Taylor, that crown represents royalty. Yes. Power, Dominique. Yes. Uh, legitimacy, victory and glory, divinity, wealth, and destiny. And so with this series, Dominique and I are going to cover all of those key areas to empower you. So if you have any young girls, go ahead and tell them about uh, the live. They can come on now at Black Girl Magic Museum. Bring them on in. Let's get them empowered. And tonight we're going to focus on royalty. So hail to the queen tonight. Yes. We're going to focus on all that she offers. Hello, once again, I'm Dr. Tuesday Mahoney. I'm the founder of HBCU Fan Attic. I'm also a HBCU College Administrator and Assistant Vice Chancellor. Yay, excited about that. We'll let y'all guess where I, I, uh, where I am. And I am so, so honored to be a corporate uh, advisor for Black Girl Magic Museum. And Dominique, if you can at this time, just tell us a little bit about Black Girl Magic Museum, and I'll share what HBCU Fan Attic is all about and how we will collaborate to empower girls with crowns. Yes, so Black Girl Magic Museum is an interactive stuff museum. We always say we're more than a museum because our full goal is to empower Black women and girls to teach with education, with representation, and just really showing that Black girl magic and telling the history of why we are Black girl magic, the resilience, the power, the strength that Black women have, and how it is important for us not to empower each other, but also our youth. And that's why we knew it would be so important to bring in our queens from all of our ancient yes. youths. Yes, not only do we want to love our uh, love on our queens, but we're going to love on all of our HBCUs. And that's where HBCU Fan Attic comes in at. Uh, Dominic has uh, empowered me in such a mighty way to be a part of Black Girl Magic Museum with HBCU Fan Attic. Go like it at HBCU Fan Attic or follow me on IG and um, follow me on YouTube. But basically, my main goal is to ensure that we focus on the history, the culture, and the academics that surround the excellence of our historically black colleges and universities. So once again, this series, Girls with Crowns, is all about honoring the royalty and honoring the goodwill ambassadors for those mighty HBCUs. If you're an alumni, go ahead and put in your HBCU in. And we can see you go put your HBCU in, of course. Um, and we wanna just empower all women and girls. So we're gonna have several queens for the next Thursdays, and we'll talk about that in a minute. They're coming on, but tonight, the one, tonight, the, only. <laughs> yes. the one and only Queen Taylor Odom. Let's give her a round and of applause. This is her mom. She said, "That's Ooh. my baby." I pinned it up. That's there. her baby. <laughs> yes, she's gorgeous. Queen Taylor, you are gorgeous, and you are representing a mighty HBCU today. Can you tell us about the Morgan State University? Right. So Morgan State University, founded in 1867, is deemed a national treasure, which means that the, the school, the land, the landmark of the school is historically significant to Baltimore. So I'm not sure 
if there's some other HBCUs, you know how we have that HBCU battle that's unknown as tension. That's just represent. I'm sure if anybody else has that, but I'm a little biased. So um, what's also um, exciting about Morgan is that they plan on opening a medical school in 2023, which is good for me because I'm a biology major. So, and I was planning on taking a year off anyway. So it'd be great if I could take a year off, come right back to my roots. So that's good. Um, coming up for our basketball team, they're competing in the NBA HBCU game in Ohio. We're trying to see if we can get out there because that's new. I've been in school for four years now and I've never seen anything like that. So I'm excited for that. Um, I have a couple of things down here. We have a plethora of organizations um, at school. Anything, anything you need, we have it. And if we don't have it, it's as easy as a click of a button to start your own organization. All you need is eight people in the signature. That's it. So I really like that about Morgan. Um, Ms. Dominique asked me why I chose Morgan. It's kind of ironic. Like, so fresh out of high school, I was an, an athlete. I played volleyball. But then when that didn't quite work out, my mom was like, okay, well, you're going to a school in Maryland. So you need to figure it out. They didn't want to go to Bowie because I went to Bowie High School. So it was right around the corner. I was going to see everybody. My mom was never going to leave me alone. So then <laughs> I decided to go to Morgan. She's like, you are not applying to Morgan. Morgan is a party school. I hear all this drama about Morgan. I literally didn't apply anywhere else on purpose. So it's like, are you not going to let me go to college because you don't want me to go to Morgan? So that's <laughs> here. And I'm glad that I did because now she sees that it's really what you choose to do. Like, of course, there are going to be parties everywhere. But if I choose to go, that's that's my business, you know? So it's like... <laughs> Yes, that's and, and yes, and Queen Taylor, and you know the party uh, reputation that HBCUs get is a little um, overbearing in a sense because really the academics is where the excellence flows, and there are uh, a plethora of associate, bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs on HBCU campuses that are creating um, over forty. 8,000 graduates right. from HBCUs each year. And of course, we hail in all the professions in this country. So don't slip on HBCU academia. Right. So I, I have a question um, for you. I want to take it back a little bit because we know you wear the crown for a reason. You know, once again, you're royalty. You're the goodwill ambassador. Let's go back to the little girl in you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about what things you did or what were you involved in? I know you mentioned a sport that really empowered you to be confident enough to one day lead your campus, Morgan State University. Right. It's, it's weird because like growing up, I didn't necessarily feel like a leader. Like I was one of those people who I was always in sports, whether it's cheerleading, volleyball, anything. I was a good team player. I was never like, the one that would lead. I'm the one that can make jokes and make everybody laugh. I'm the I'm that person on the team. So it really wasn't until I got to college that I did a complete like 180. My mom's like, "Who is this girl?" I'm like, "I have no clue. I have no clue who I'm becoming, but I like this." So it wasn't even it wasn't instilled in me from the beginning. I think when I got to school and realized that I could take different avenues versus just being a typical athlete or a typical girl who just goes to class. I wanted to try something else, something that I never done before. So it really wasn't until I got to school that I stepped out and branched out. Okay, okay, yeah, wonderful. And you know, being in, involved uh, when you do enter college is very important and for high school young girls that are watching today, getting involved is important as well. I, I was a shy girl in school myself, but you know, once I hit that HBCU campus, uh, my entire life changed the same way, uh, Queen uh, Taylor. And so I want you to just also kind of share how important it is to as a college student, as a uh, black college student, to be engaged in campus life. And then tell us what made you decide to run for that crown. Okay, so I would say it's extremely important to be engaged versus just wearing the crown and wearing the sash. Like I tell people all the time, these things are man-made. Somebody made this and somebody made the crown as well. You could take it off and it's about who I am as a person and what I do. It's not about Say that. what I look. It's about what I actually do, what legacy I leave behind, intangible or tangible. It's, it's more than objects. Like, it's, it's different than that. So I think it's extremely important to be engaged because, one, these people vote for you. 
they vote for you and then they don't see you anymore. It's like, we don't want her back. We don't want her back. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing. So I think it's extremely important. I think that's the part that I like the most, like being able to go places at my school and just have fun in, in the spirit, like being there, being present. And then, okay, excellent. Dominique, can you talk about how representation matters for Black Girl Magic Museum and throw it back to Ms. Taylor? Yes, so I when Dr. Mahoney told me about this, Dr. Tuesday for me, when she told me about this program, I knew it was so important because we talk about representation so much. We get so many young black girls that come inside the museum and they're amazed by the black women that is on the walls, on the canvases and things like that. And we really wanted to hone in on our younger young ladies, you know, that's making an impact so that our young, younger girls could see the representation because if you don't see it, how can you believe it or achieve it? And a lot of times lately we've seen Miss America and Miss, you know, for our states, they're starting to look like us, but uh, you know, before then they didn't look like us. So where could we go to find that representation? So I knew it was important to reach back to our HBCUs because when you go to HBCUs, there's nothing but black excellence and black queens all through the campuses. So I knew that representation is just key to Black Girl Magic Museum. It's key to HBCUs and everything that we do. So for you, Taylor, why is representation so important to you? For me, I would say it's important because you really never know what you can do until you see someone who looks like you doing it. Like it's, it's certain, like for example, when I came to Morgan, I think open house, like I was still in high school, the queen at the time, Heather, I saw her with her crown and her sash on and I knew that it, that was exactly where I was gonna end up. It was something after seeing her that made me think, I don't know exactly what that is, but I know that I want to try it. So I think it's extremely important because it shows someone like, she once before was exactly where I am. So to now see her here, it's like, I can do the exact same thing and make it my own. I think it's, I've, I've seen so many things that has inspired me, like subconsciously, people do that all the time. So I think it's extremely important. I think it's the reason why I am where I am today, because I physically was able to see that. Had I not seen that, had I not came to an HBCU, had I not, had I went and played volleyball at a PWI, who knows where I would have been. So I think it's extremely important that I was there to physically see that, especially me being a visual learner. To see that is like, absolutely, I'm going to be there. And I've, I've talked to Heather since then. So it's just coming around full circle. It's, it's insane. That is awesome. Wow. And I know, um, Queen Taylor, that being a campus queen is not always easy. And you're just talking about the next topic that I wanted to really bring up is mentorship for young girls. Mm -hmm. And I know that Dominique as the founder of Black Girl Magic Museum, she really hails as a major mentor for me and other black women and girls who've entered her facility and she just transformed, you know, our lives in general. So when you think about who are your role models and your mentor, your your mentor that actually, you know, kind of helped propel you to this level. Um, can you share that? And I, I see a young lady already on saying, that's my baby. <laughs> hey, what type of influence is that Miss Tammy? Or <laughs> what type of uh, influence did, you know, or well, who's your mentor and what type of influence did they give you and to get you where you are today and how important is mentorship, basically? I think mentorship is extremely important, but I also think you should have multiple mentors for different, like, areas of your life. Like, I'm always going to have my mom. My mom is probably the first person who I'm going to talk to about majority of the things, but then it's nice to have, like, someone who is in school with you might be like a grade or two, um, a classification or two higher than you, that's important. Someone who's out of school, who's in a career that you like. I think mentorship is like having guardian angels almost. Like mm -hmm. it takes Good. helping you make decisions. They're, they're gonna let you fall sometimes because you need to, you need to learn how to fall and get back up. But I think it's extremely important and I wanna get deeper involved in mentorship. I think because of COVID and everything is kind of hard. But we, more yeah. than as a couple of um, mentorship organizations, that is their sole purpose. So I plan to partner with them before I get up out of here, but I am going to try. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay. Excellent. Taylor, do you have any questions for us? Um, I just kind of want to know, like, what, 
what was the driving force for this Girls with Crown? Because I like, I love it. My advisor said to me, I was like, absolutely. And I told you prior to, I'm, I felt like I wasn't doing anything over break. So I'm like, let me, let's do something. Yes. So I just want to know what's the driving force and then what is the end goal? Yeah, Dominique, can you talk about the crown and what it represents um, from the Black Girl Magic platform for as far as the hair and loving the skin you're in? Can you talk about that in relation to why this uh, series came about? Absolutely. So um, as I said before, when we opened up, uh, we have a royalty room. We have a I Am Not My Hair room. So those are two of our biggest rooms where we have the crowns. The girls can come in and take pictures with crowns. And mm -hmm. they just lit up every time especially our younger girls under 13 was so excited to see that representation to see pictures on the walls and partner up with dr tuesday her biggest thing is educating education getting young Ooh. girls and women into school and so Go we just knew that it was so important to really and Dr. Tuesday, she's the assistant vice chancellor at Southern University. So, and for yes, <laughs> yes. And so, we knew that it was important to really show that representation. And so, Dr. Tuesday came to me and she said, Let's do this series to really show representation and then also highlight our, you know, HBCUs, the girls, you know, a lot of you that's on the campus that's giving back, that's being a an example let's give you all a platform and then we really hope it ends to once we're done or in the middle where we can have a panel with young girls to be able to see you guys in person and see oh, the queens and what you know they can one day be you know this is an example and you guys are the true example of representation of um, black excellence of resilience because I know that you have a story that you might not even be saying right now that no matter what you go through no matter if you have been picked on if you were the shyest person if you you know just whatever it is that you are worthy and that there's women and girls that look like you that's you know being trailblazers so I would love to do a panel. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. We're just, we, we do have a lot of great things coming um, down the pipeline aside from Girls with Crowns. Um, me and Dominique are getting ready to hit the road and we're going to be in the largest uh, African American Day Parade okay. in the country. Um, we'll be broadcast on seven stations. So we're going to have uh, a seat of girls and young men actually and they'll have on uh, loving, it's, it's um Loving the skin that I, I'm in, it's my melanin. That's the theme. They're going to do a melanin march, sort of like a historical march that we um, have done with the um, civil rights for our um, heritage and supporting our lineage here in the country. We want to make sure that young girls and boys know how to empower and how to serve in an advocacy way. So we're going to have over hopefully two to 300 young girls and boys and our girls will have on crowns and they're going to walk that parade. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're doing two empowerment segments with the young men. So the men are going to have their day of empowerment and then the young girls are going to have a tea uh, in Louisiana. I'm going to do it in Louisiana. And we're so excited about that. And then Dominique is currently working on an amazing girls conference with her committee um, in March, which will be in Dallas, Texas. And we're looking, um, Queen Taylor, to have Black Girl Magic, the exhibit, mm -hmm. pop up at HBCU, such as Morgan State University. So we're really looking maybe to hit spring break or if there's an HBCU out there that wants us to pop up, we're ready for that. I want to turn the tables back to our royalty here. Um, once again, we are, for those who are just coming in, interviewing our amazing queen, Girls with Queens, Queen Taylor Odom, um, representing the Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. You are the 77th? Yes. Miss Morgan State University, right? Yeah. So you follow an amazing legacy of women and, of course, your court. We want to acknowledge your court and SGA and all of those students that support you, of course, want to acknowledge them and your advisors. Um, could you tell us who your chancellor is? Just shout out your chancellor's name so everyone will know chancellor. Morgan State University. Vice President, President. Mm -hmm. Your president, I'm sorry. Your president, your campus president. 
Sorry, that's my first time ever hearing that word. <laughs> Yeah, we so in some HBCUs we call chancellors and some we're called presidents. So okay. definitely want to know your president. Dr. David Wilson. Yes. All right. Shout out to our president, President um, Wilson. And so Queen Taylor, back to you. I know you mentioned something about medical school. Could you tell us what your career focus is? And then we're going to move into entrepreneurship to see if you have anything um, that we would like to hear about regarding your passion. I'm and just Taylor, so before you start, can you pin, can you type in your, um, your tag so that I can pin it mm -hmm. so people can follow you and support you in any capacity? Because I see a lot of uh, people on this platform and we want to make sure that we are supporting you past today because you also need, you know, just to be uplifted and, you know, celebrated. Yes, absolutely. Right. Now, I don't want to mention it. Okay. Yes, and while she's doing it, if you have any questions for our queen, please feel free to put it in um, the comments, and we'll, we will definitely share in just a second. So what is your career direction, and what do you see yourself as a young lady in the areas of professionalism and career? So as of right now, I'm going to graduate with my Bachelor's of Science in Biology, but I am going to start my own swimwear business because... Wow. Right. That's why I was like, I'm just going to answer both the questions at one time. Yes. <laughs> Because over the pandemic, I got bored, bought a sewing machine, and I taught myself how to sew. And then I'm like, I didn't even know I could do this. I started it off because I, I'm one of those girls who are shaped a little different, different areas. So I'm like, I keep going to Target, Walmart, all the fancy bathing suit shops. I buy them. They never fit. So I bought them for my, I made them for myself at first. And then people were like, well, maybe you want, maybe you want. So I made a couple for people and they liked them. So I'm going to try that full time for a whole year and then reevaluate and see what I can do to get back into education and go to medical school. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth between the two. It's like, you know how you talk about like left brain and right brain. I feel like I'm sit, sitting dead in the center of that. So it's, it's hard at times, but I like that I can have choices and different avenues to take. So that is what I'm doing currently. And I would say like, in the next five years, I would rather go the swimmer route because it, it, it feeds my creativity side versus just my educational side. So I would like to have my own store, like a storefront, a warehouse, like making it in in here, here so I can see it, hire people that I know to sew. Like I want it to be a big thing, like not something like Fashion Nova, something that is easily accessible, that is trendy, that will never, not too expensive, it's affordable, that fits for everybody something like that that's my end goal for that that is so okay amazing. well first of all yeah first of all i'm sending my sides what about you dominique <laughs> right no absolutely that's yeah. everyone on this <laughs> line especially with the summer when the summer come in everyone we're always looking for those great swimsuits so you're in the right field and um i do want to shout out uh, black girl ventures they have a grant right now for um black young black men and women that are attending the hbcu that is interested in entrepreneurship they have a grant for five thousand dollars and i will send that over to you taylor um yes. so that you can find out about yes. so that is amazing and hopefully you could be a part of that program to get the five thousand dollars to start up your um swimwear line Absolutely. Yes, that would be great. Like, that's, again, coming full circle is one of these moments where I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I was just talking about yesterday how I'm spending so much of my own personal money. Then I got some money in the mail. Now you're telling me about a grant. Yes. I really moves mountains. That's yeah. Yes, and so um, also, um, Queen Taylor, Dominique is, I guess, a world-class entrepreneur, and so that is one of the, <laughs> definitely one of her uh, expertise in the areas of business. She's built, once again, an amazing business, Black Girl Magic Museum, and she's had multiple businesses um, out there, and so you definitely want to make sure that you have a business mentor that you can connect with, and, you know, we're building over here, for me, um, I definitely went the education route, but I want to say you can do both. You can do both. You can become that medical doctor and then you can make your swimsuit collection. And as a matter of fact, you never know how God would do it. He can take your expertise in medicine and collide that with your 
passion and somehow you can make swimwear for women with disabilities or women with health conditions or make them confident in their body if they've had to have a, a, a you know, surgery from cancer, things like that. So really think about it beyond the natural and look at the supernatural gifts that obviously, you know, God has given you um, to move in that area. There's a reason why you learn to sew. There's a reason why you're passionate about swimsuits. And so you want to create that niche that's unique and hopefully focuses on building the African-American community and everything about that. I've never, you, my mind is blown. Like, I've never thought about it that way. I have to go. That's why you're here tonight. That, yeah. <laughs> we are excited for you. to have you here tonight. And just like you said, um, I know you've heard of Miel Organic, um, Organics, the hair company. She was in nursing school and she created the product. And I think she's worth over a hundred million dollars today. <laughs> so, you know, it is definitely <laughs> possible to do both and you have support in us also to be able to help you launch your entrepreneurship journey. And if I have some of the ladies that's on the live right now, they're entrepreneurs too. So I know that they can definitely give some great advice on how to do both and manage. So we're here to support. I need all the advice, all the <laughs> everything every day i come in with a new idea that's it's just I've, i'm all over the place i need some I need some organization so yeah yeah write the write the vision down and make it plain have you done a vision board for the year do a vision board and put all those ideas down as you come along you never know how that's going to empower you but i definitely you know i'm going to speak hbcu i'm going to speak education you need to keep going and go all the way till you can't to you max the thing out yeah for me i was told i would never go to college you know and i tell this all the time because this is my testimony i was very shy and insecure and uh, didn't talk so people thought i wasn't able to learn but they would to told me that i would never go to college and really be anything i did it for myself but i proved them all wrong they all call me dr tuesday today i i went to the max in the area of education that i could go and then my passion I do that too. So you can do both and I want to see you take it to the next level. And I'm speaking from the mom standpoint, your mom and your parents standpoint, you better go get them. You better go to medical school. No, I, think, <laughs> I think it's hard because it's like social media nowadays has such a strong grasp on things. Like I constantly feel like I'm running out of time when I'm 21 years old. So it's in it, mm. it, from you it's shown both of you, it's showing me that I literally can have it all. Should I choose to go that route? Should I choose to take that leap of faith? I can have it all. It's really, it really starts internally. Once you choose that, yes, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to be a swimwear designer, it's written and set in stone. Absolutely. And we all are going to support you and buy those swimsuits. Um, I Thank definitely, when we open up, we need to have an example in the museum. We need to have something because this <laughs> is great. Have her come. Let's have her come and display what she has yes, so far. That will be from Baltimore. Great. Yep. yep. I'm okay. No, absolutely. And let me tell you this. I had to take a sabbatical from um, social media because when you're seeing all of these things, you got to know, like, when you write that vision and make it plain, God, if he gave it to you, He's going to see you through it. He didn't give it to you. It doesn't matter. And Dr. Tuesday was just telling me this last night. It doesn't matter who does what or what lane you're in. As long as you're doing what you are called to do, he's going to make provision for your vision. So know that it's never too late. I started Black Girl Magic Museum in 2020. I had just turned 30. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I want to be able to make impact. I want to be able to give back. And when I say this exceeded my expectations and I knew no matter who's building what or who's doing what God gave me this. And just like he gave it to me, he's going to give it to you so that no matter who's selling out online, whenever you go forth, you're going to sell out. You're going to have your supporters. And at 21, you are doing enough. I, um, I'm so right. proud of you. I was reading your bio and I'm like, oh my God, she's amazing. Like, <laughs> I was so excited to be able to get on um, live today and speak with you. Thank you so much. That means Great time. 
Yeah, three times Dean Lister. So we know your honors and you're really into your academics, but you know you wear the crown because you're the alpha of your community and uh, you're the leader. So what you're gaining today, every event, I know it's not easy, but every event you go to, uh, I work a lot with the Queens and have for over years, uh, many years in leadership, you know, leadership preparation. I do a lot of those workshops with the uh, Royal Court and with SGA in many ways. And so you're learning the leadership skills you are uh, learning how to speak you know public speaking opportunities anything that the school gets you involved in that's building you as a professional you're only going to be more powerful when you hit the world by storm <laughs> you hit it by storm or whatever you're going to be uh, amazing so we kind of touched a little bit on what i think i wanted you to say but if you were talking to a little girl that may be watching right now who may not feel confident about themselves or a young girl in high school who may want to give up on life or get you know giving in to peer pressure and negative influences queen taylor what would you say to that little girl to encourage her to go pursue her dreams go to college hbcus and i'm saying <laughs> what would you <laughs> what would you say to that little girl that's watching you now that looks at you with that crown like who would have said because they are when they see you what would you say i would say so the first thing you should want to do is quiet all the background noise any thoughts that aren't your own any statements that you have not said any statements that you know not to be true that people are trying to say to you because people try to tear you down when you're already dealing with a lot, it seems like it's just a lot piling on, it's piling on, it's piling on. Quiet all the background noise and sit and think to yourself, what is it that I want to do? Who am I? What is my name? How old am I? Do go through this this statements, these statements that are that are true, that are proven facts. And that's how I get myself through a lot of things. So start there. If you're not too confident in yourself, that that's something that you can build every day. You have to figure out what works for you. Some people can write down affirmations on sticky notes and stick them up on the walls. Some people, I talk to myself in the car on the way to work. I sit and talk to myself. I do that too. <laughs> I got to me, but I was like, I better be quiet. Somebody watch you. <laughs> I definitely do that. Yes. If you got to sit and talk to yourself, that's fine. By yourself in public. I don't, if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. And, and, and if somebody cuts you off, I'm sorry I'm having a conversation with myself. Just give me right. a second. <laughs> I come first. I come first. I come first every time. Okay. So focus on what you want to do. Focus on what you know to be true. Let everything else fall where it may. Like, God is going to protect you at the end of the day. So just focus on what it is that you want to do to build up your inner confidence. You put this ideal woman in your head, you, the future version of you. So if you're a young girl, your ideal teenager, your ideal, whoever that person is, focus on how to get there and nothing else. Who is that person? In, in, two, in two years, who is that girl? How is she there? Focus on that. Focus on future, future preparation to get there. Focus on what you're doing in the present to get to the future. Yes. I love that. Absolutely love that. And so we're going to get ready to wrap up this amazing experience with once again our royalty, the uh, Queen Taylor Odoms, um, Morgan State University, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, right? Baltimore, Maryland. Yes. Could you tell us one reason before we wrap it up why a student should choose Morgan State University? And then if you can provide us with the uh, email address, I'm sorry, the website for Morgan State. I believe that a person should choose Morgan State University because it's like going to a place, first of all, knowing that your school will never go away because that's what a national treasure is. You will be able to come back in 25 years and Morgan State University will still be there. I don't know where it would be, but Morgan State University <laughs> will still be there. Yes, think about, yes. Think about, I can apply here and go here for four years, go here for four more years, go here. just think about the longevity and the legacy that you can create there specifically. Even if all the other colors, people got the orange blue, worry about the fact that this orange <laughs> blue will all Say that. Always. Emphasis on always. I might be a little biased, but always. You better be. 
Yeah. All right. That's Morgan State University. And of course, that's our queen, Taylor Odom. We're so excited to have had you today. So I want um, Dominique to go ahead and share uh, with our audience and with everyone. We are also, you know, pre-recording this on YouTube as well. So the world will see it and won't miss a moment of this amazing experience tonight. Could you tell us about uh, how they can get in touch with a Black Girl, or follow rather Black Girl Magic Museum and some of the things you have coming up? Absolutely. On all platforms, it doesn't matter where. It's Black Girl Magic Museum. And then um, secondly, we have a, we are getting ready to launch um, a lot of cities, doing some pop-ups, popping up on some HBCUs. Um, we are very excited. We have a conference coming up in Dallas, Texas for our um, Young Ladies for Women's Heritage Month. So we have a lot of things coming up. We're gonna be releasing a new ambassador program where we're gonna be recruiting new ambassadors for Black Girl Magic Museum, just really to really show the Black Girl Magic, you know, in all of us that we come in all shapes, sizes, colors, textures, across the board so we have a lot coming up so even with our website black girl magic museum go and check it out and me and dr tuesday is going to be here every thursday at six every p.m. thursday highlighting our um queens from our different campuses and taylor you said something about your swimsuit do you already have an instagram page or anything like that not yet i'm still oh, okay a lot of things for that because it's just a lot going on at one time all the time for me. So I'm still working on it, but very soon I plan on releasing the social media on my birthday in February. So oh, okay. that's we're going to be waiting for that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, send it to us. So whoever we're with, we can shout it out at the end of it. Um, I just want to just reintroduce myself once again. I'm Dr. Tuesday Mahoney. I am an author. And so I want to make sure that we are empowering uh, young people to go to college, number one, and to also make sure you have an HBCU in your college choice, as well as choose one because we want you to be a graduate and also if you are a career individual and you want to go back for your master's degree or your doctoral level think about going to an hbcu there are, are a wealth of programs that are offered live and virtual you don't slip on historically black colleges we need to honor that history we need to make sure we appreciate the culture and then of course that we take advantage of the academics i have two books that's going to really support our middle schoolers all up to high schoolers and anyone that needs to learn about HBCUs is HBCU Fanatic, the guide. I don't know if y'all can see that, but the guide to HBCUs. And, and you know, I if you know me, like Dominique, know me, I'm not just gonna give you a guide, it actually uh, takes you through every HBCU. There's over 106 HBCUs by state in this book, and then along with the guide, we got guidance. So I'm going to walk you through that thing. Get ready for college. HBC fan at it. Get ready for college. It's going to help you year by year as a high schooler, middle school, high schooler. Get ready for college. We want every uh, African-American student out there in college. And why not do it at the HBCU? Because your life will forever be Change. I'm a graduate of Clark Atlanta University. I attended Southern University at Shreveport, and of course, I currently reside as the assistant vice chancellor for Southern University, the only historically black college um, system in the country. But I'm so, so very proud to learn more about Morgan State University. I'm so impressed with our amazing queen. Let's give Queen Taylor Odom a big round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much. You did a phenomenal job. We're so thankful. Do you have any final words for us? I have a couple, but I'm not. Go ahead. Yes. No, okay. we're here for the you. We, we know Go that ahead. you had your studies and stuff. So if you got some words, tell us. Right. So first, I want to say my inner child was just jumping at the fact of a book to tell me how to get ready to go to college. Like, there you go. We're getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, ready. You know, I'm from Louisiana. I'm from Louisiana. So this is how we bring it. <laughs> For school, high school, I would have been on the track. I would have been but I'm, I'm not regretful for my, my path. I'm not at all. However, I will be buying that for a couple of little girls I know who just need just a little push. It's a little, little. Thank you. 
Um, and I also want to say, like, to the people who look at the crown and the sash and they're thinking, like, oh, that's that's out of my league. You know, sometimes this may not be for you. However, like I said earlier, the position is man-made. Someone at Morgan State University made this up, the first ever queen. She said, you know, I want to be queen of the school. And that's what I'm going to do. And that it was the start of this legacy. However, you don't need a crown and a sash to, to make an impact. You don't need an army of people behind you to make an impact either. If you want to go to your school and you feel like I want to serve, I want to help this body of people, then you do that in whatever way possible. I know people who aren't a miss or a mist or never been in world court and do more than me. And those people are inspiring to me. So don't let the crown and the sash like send you back because I can take it off and you would never have known I had it. So it's like, don't look at it as if it's like I said, it's an object, literally like, that it's, it wasn't given to me. It didn't flow out of the air. It, it it was an object. So keep that in mind that I could take it off. Like just think about the yeah. Not and it's all about the wearer and what you bring the world. So we love that, um, Queen Taylor, for love you sharing that. That's powerful. And everybody, and that's what this series is all about, not just the girls who actually have the crowns, but to let every girl know that you already have this amazing crown of excellence that you can walk in. So I appreciate you saying that. I just want to add to what you said about it's man-made. And I think a lot of times what we need to focus on too is, um, you know, sometimes as a queen or when you have your crown, fixing other people's crowns. We say that, you know, and that's what I think about wearing that crown. You have that responsibility to fix someone else's crown. You never know what someone else is going through. You never know the impact of you taking the responsibility to say, I'm going to be a leader because with your, you taking the physical crown, that's what you said. I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be a spokesperson. I'm going to represent. I'm going to show someone else that no matter what I'm going through, no matter how hard or tough life gets, I'm still going to wake up every day and I'm going to push forward. And right. what you said about, even if you're by yourself, a lot of times, even I know personally with me, there's been times where I wanted to give up. And I remember those young girls that needed to see that representation, that need to see me adjusting. And even sometimes I have to, sometimes my crown break and I got to piece it together, but I still <laughs> put, I piece it together and put it on my head and I'm fixing other people's crown as I'm pushing forward. And that's where I do want to say with black women and girls, our black girl magic really shows up because a lot of times our crowns need to be adjusted. So I'm glad to see you as Miss Morgan State. And I can tell that you are fixing a lot of people's crowns. Yeah. And that just, that just goes without saying as well. Like if you wake up every day and just be a good person, you don't know what you open the door for somebody, you let somebody get in front of you in the line, you smiled at a person through your mask, you're winking at people like <laughs> anything require like a sash and a crown, it doesn't take that. It just takes it takes you being a good person and you wanting to represent for people and to help people. So I think that's extremely important. And it and it didn't really hit me how important it was until I got to this point that I was like, okay. I, I get it now. Like being in the world court prior, it was like, okay, I understand it. Then I got here and I said, oh, okay. So this, I get it. Okay, I get it. And it was full force since then. So I'm, I'm really appreciative of doing, of being a part of this. Extremely appreciative of this. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Tammy. Yeah, and and also, we will be following up with you. We're going to be sending your um, shirt very soon. So you, on top of how Dr. Tuesday showed you the book, we have a shirt. She has apparel. She has shirts. She's coming out with so many other things to really get people to be HBCU fan addicts. We want everyone to go to an HBCU if we have right. anything to say with it. And, and to, <laughs> both, to both of you, let me know whatever you need me to do, ever. Like, anything at Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Anything. I'm good. Oh, I'm I need that swimsuit. I need that swimsuit for Jamaica this summer. I need it to fit me just right, yeah. Queen Taylor. Come on. <laughs> like how you want it to feel, the color, anything. Yes, I'm yes. I, I definitely want it to be pink and green, <laughs> for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hey, while we're while we're speaking on Peak and Green, let's shout out to the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Right now, they're celebrating their um, 
Founders Day today, J13. So shout out to DST yeah. and then to all of the sororities and fraternities that are celebrating in January. We're J15 for Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, and so I'm so excited about that. Queen Taylor, can you please take a moment to just um to just thank your war court, maybe shout their names out, your SJ president, so they can kind of also be acknowledged. I know they support you, your team, basically. Okay, so shout out. Shout out. The Royal Eminence. I mean, Eminence. I saw that. Royal Eminence. Yes, I love that word. Um, we have love it. Mr. Miss Freshman, Azon and Sandy, Mr. And Miss Sophomore, Chi Chi and Edwin, Mr. And Miss Junior, Kason and Kaisha, Mr. And Miss Senior. Wow. PJ and then me and Mr. Morgan, LaShawn. Shout out to you guys for keeping me keeping me on track, never letting me slip up, always telling me when I'm wrong, <laughs> telling me when I'm right. They're really like my family. Like I feel like I adopted a whole bunch of people as families, co cousins, daughters, son. I just feel like <laughs> And shout out to SGA and our president and vice president, Deshaun and Jamira, and the whole SGA. I could spend 30 minutes naming it. <laughs> they and then all of the students at Morgan State University, right? Shout out. Uh, you all actually are the largest HBCU in Maryland. Let's, let's acknowledge that as well. What did, <laughs> what did I say? It's always going to, we're always going to be there. Always be there. <laughs> Always going to be there. Always going to be there. Yes, and so can you let, um, for those who may be watching and other young people maybe in high school that would like to consider Morgan State University, could you let them know how they can find out more, um, the website? Yeah, the website is www.morgan.edu. Very simple. I'm pretty sure there's a place that says, like, new students, and then you click, go ahead and apply. Then don't, even, don't even worry about it. Just go and apply. There's a period... <laughs> There's a period between, I want to say, the end of spring semester or somewhere in the summer where I think they waive the application fee. I've seen it before. I don't know if that's consecutively every summer, but I've seen it a couple times. So keep your ears to the ground about that. Always check the website. You can follow the Instagram at Morgan State U. That's the official like school Instagram to keep up with that as well. Thank you. Okay. Did you say Morgan? dot edu or morgan state morgan dot edu okay i'm putting that in the comments all right wonderful well thank you so well, much, thank you so much. And, i mean yes we truly appreciate that royalty thank yes. you for having me i i really appreciate this i needed this today i needed yes. to <laughs> a group before we return to school so thank you so much Thank you. Great. Just and we're just started. We're, we will, we're going to be like this. <laughs> I'll be yes. watching my sister queen. So, yes. For that. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we have, of course, with, uh, once again, Girls with Crowns is our series. And we're uh, in, uh, of course, our. Um, our first season and we have about eight or maybe more um, definitely eight amazing queens we had nine amazing queens that we're spotlighting this spring 2022 and we're so excited that miss morgan state university taylor odoms was our very first queen i'm so glad to have honored her as our um our opening queen we have many more to come once again dominic when are we doing this <laughs> We're doing it every Thursday at 6 p.m. Tune in to see yeah. our Girls with Crowns HBCU edition. What great way to start a Girls with Crowns then to highlight girls at HBCU making it happen and making a difference. It's that All right. PST for those who going and looking for it at six r6 is your five so 7 p.m est oh you yes, seven yes. seven eastern you're right seven eastern that's so right we'll see you um here at black girl magic museum live and once again thank you to the 77th morgan state university queen um we're so excited to once again have you on board with black girl magic and hbcu fan go go and also like hbcu fanatic go be a fan at um hbcu fanatic.com go be a fan and be a part of some of the resources that we're going to offer once again the books are available on amazon for youth groups we do um i uh, hope that you go out and we're here dominique and i to speak on entrepreneurship women empowerment girls empowerment 
me, uh, HBCU College Enrollment. We're coming for you. We have our next queen next week. You're going to have to tune in to see who that's going to be and what amazing HBCU we're going to hit next. We're going to head back south. We're on the <laughs> East Coast. We're going to head back south, and we're going to hit you with our next queen. So we hope that you join us next Thursday. Dominique, you have any final words? No, I'm just so happy to have Taylor today, and we are so happy, and we'll see you next week, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Time. We do this for the culture. Yes. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.